Look at the size of this lens. Now look at the image quality coming out of this thing. The new 28p XCD lens from Hasselblad is a glorious little bundle of joy. 245 grams and the smallest lens in the Hasselblad X system line up with extremely impressive image quality, which makes this my new best friend, play tape. Super wide angle lenses have always been a big favorite of mine. Why? Because they're the most creative lenses that photographers have at their disposal. Now, of course, we all love a telephoto lens with those professional looking blurry backgrounds, but it's easy photography. You don't have to work for it. You just focus on the subject and the lens does all the work for you. Wide angle photography is ultimately more challenging, getting your composition perfect and considering where to place your focus point. And now I have the daddy of all wide angle lenses, the Hasselblad 28P XCD. Now it's not much to look at, quite simple in fact, no bells or whistles, very understated but stylish. And where is all the glass? This thing is tiny, not much bigger than what's on the back of your phone. But in this case, size isn't everything. In fact, it's nothing compared to what this little lens is capable of. It goes without saying that when it comes to Hasselblad, the optics are always going to be world class and they have to be because when it's attached to one of the highest resolution cameras on the market, you're going to notice when the image is less than perfect. Even though the 28P is fairly cheap in comparison to the other lenses in the Hasselblad lineup, the image detail is no less impressive. So what is this lens designed for? Because 28 millimeters sounds like a strange focal length to most of us full frame shooters. But when it's attached to a medium format camera like the X2D, it's actually equivalent to a 22 millimeter full frame, which is far more appealing as a wide angle lens. This lens was designed and marketed for street photography, architecture, landscapes, and professional studio photo shoots, all of which I've tested out in real world scenarios and it's good. Even close-up photography is on the table with this lens because of the close range focus length being this close. You can even blur out those backgrounds and bring attention to your subject matter, almost like a macro lens because you have so much resolution to work with. It even works the other way if you want to shoot through objects. Just love this restaurant window in Covent Garden. F4. I mean, I can imagine wedding photographers would gain a lot from having the 28P in their kit for those group shots and those close up detail shots. I recently photographed a wedding function band called Excalibur using the 28P XCD lens and was thoroughly impressed with the detail and quality of these images. Yeah. Just positioned myself on the old witch for some traffic shots. Going for a third of a second F16, which this lens is more than capable of. Weighing in at 245 grams, which is nuts, smaller than most kit lenses, 43.5 millimeters in length, this thing is the perfect companion for the street photographer and the traveler. And because it has a full metal exterior design, this thing is robust and in no way feels cheap. The focusing ring is metal and flush with the rest of the lens. I would prefer if it had the rubber ring like the 45P, but that's just prefer prefer preference. Shooting at these higher f-stops like f14, we can see just how sharp the image is throughout the entire frame zoomed into 100%. Going for a handheld half second exposure here of this carousel. I've manually focused so I can just fire when I see some passers-by coming into frame. 
half seconds should give me some nice motion blur, but the image stabilization will keep everything else nice and sharp. Wide-angle lenses are prone to barrel distortion, but I'm happy to report that the 28P suffers from little warping. Certainly after a small tweak using Lightroom lens profile correction, you won't notice a thing. Vignetting is okay, some darkening in the corners, but again, nothing that post-processing won't fix. Starburst effects at higher f-stops like f16 are very nice. This image was taken at f18 and we do have nice lens bursts. Not quite as good as the much more expensive 21 XCD lens, but you wouldn't expect them to be. And again, nice and sharp into the corners at such a narrow aperture. Chromatic aberration is well controlled and minimal for such a small lens. Zoomed all the way into 100%, we can see very little green or magenta fringing. Right, so for this shot, I'm gonna go for a motion blur of a cyclist coming past. It's a bit hit and miss, but I find that 13th of a second usually works pretty well if you pan at the same speed as them. Um, also use image stabilization as well. Not the cleanest of images, but certainly the most challenging kind of photography to get right. Well, the water is like glass right now, the reflections are just incredible. Some of the best I've ever seen. I'm actually going to do a handheld shot at f16. Um, no focus stack obviously because I'm right in the water. I've nowhere to put my tripod. So I'm just going to focus on this little rock just in front of me and hopefully I won't have to focus stack this. wait for the brightness of the sun to just uh, come down a bit. I'm actually shooting at f14, um, 25th of a second and ISO 64. So the beauty of this lens is that you can actually shoot f14 and remain sharp into the corners of the frame. So I don't need to focus that this, I can get it in one frame. I'm just waiting for the right moment with the waves and the sun's obviously a bit too bright. So. I always make it a point to snap a Highland coup when I'm in the Highlands, and this one's a beauty. F4 is incredibly sharp in the middle of the frame, but F8 is where the lens is at its sharpest throughout the entire image. So I found this glorious road on the NC500. The vista is beautiful. The road leads all the way down to the lock with the mountains in the background. The sun's coming in from about three o'clock, which is a perfect angle. And I thought it's a perfect opportunity to try this wide angle lens, the 28P. So let's go with F4, F8, and see which one looks best. In the end, I decided on the F4 shot, which had more separation from the background.
So I'm having to improvise on this shot because I don't have the correct ND filter thread size for this lens. So I've got the Peter McKinnon variable ND filter and I'm just gonna hold it in front of the lens, nice and steady on a very stable tripod. On the whole, this lens is an absolute triumph. It's small, light, and incredibly sharp, especially through f5.6 to f11. Even the higher f-stops render the corners at a professional level because it's a professional lens. It makes the 28p XCD a lens that's going into my bag every time. Much smaller and lighter than my 24 mm Sigma art lens, which I've championed for many years. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed some of the images from my camera this week. I have a headshot photography course available, so if you're interested in improving your portrait skills, then there are 50 videos and over five hours worth of training on the course. I also have a Lightroom preset pack available on my website. I'll pop links, all of those links in the description below, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you.